I would like to welcome you once more again to the topic which I started last weekend, which is false prophets. Who are they? And how can we know them? I know that is highly a controversial subject, but it can't be avoided because it's the greatest plague to the church and the Christian world today. Today we will be addressing the subject signs and wonders. You hear that word a lot, advertised a lot for religious meetings or crusades meetings, signs and wonders. Where are these signs and wonders from? I'm going to be reading quite a good number of scriptures here just so I can explain this, the subject matter. And I will start by making reference to the verse that the Lord said, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And this is made in reference to the context of materialism. It's my contention that much of prophecy today is not centered on spirituality of God, His will, and His accomplishment of the plan of salvation to the world, but is focused more on material possessions. Second Peter 2 says that false prophets appeal to the desires of the flesh. They appeal to the desire to have money, the desire to have possessions. In short, their minds are focused on ugly things. And I want you to go and examine those prophecies and those prophets. What are they focused on? On your close work with God or on your blessing and your miracle from God? Philippians 3, 19 says that their God is their stomach and their minds are focused on ugly things. So any prophet that comes to you and talking about things that will appeal to your flesh, possessions, is a false prophet. The true prophet will work on your integrity and spiritual walk with the Lord, which is the real blessing of the believer. You read Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes, it talks about the blessings it's not saying blessing are those who possess material possessions for theirs will be the kingdom of God. It is the contrary. And in Luke 6, it says, Woe to you who live well now. Jesus hasn't changed. I challenge you to read the Gospels and listen to Jesus. Then you'll be able to distinguish who false prophets are. I'll start by quoting to you Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 is talking about this book, the Word of God. And the book of Hebrews makes a lot of reference to the Word of God. It starts by saying, in the past, and in many ways, God spoke to our forefathers and has in this last day spoken already, spoken to us by His Son. And in Hebrews 2 verse 1 and following, it says that we must pay careful attention to what we have heard. The word. We must pay careful attention to what we have heard. The Lord gave the commission to the twelve and they wrote down the New Testament, which is the word of God, so that we can continue in it. Most people today are not satisfied with a complete canon. That's why they need a prophet to proclaim a word to them. Hebrews 4.12 Still in relation to the word spoken. In fact, Hebrews 4.1 says that we must pay careful attention to the word spoken to us because there still remains a rest for the people of God, the millennium that is about to begin. For those who heard the word of God in the past, 
the word had no value to them because the word was not mixed with faith. Do we hear the word of God today? Do we believe it in faith? Or we want to hear some prophecy. So in 4.12 it says, The word of God is quick. It's alive. It's living and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And pierces to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. And the joints and the marrow. And that this word, it descends and critiques the thoughts and the intents of the heart of man. So that everything will be laid bare before the God to whom we must give an account. I must give an account. You must give an account. And this word will dissect you. Don't just listen to me. Listen to this word in your pursuit and following of your prophet. Signs and wonders. Pretty much mentioned quite a few times in the Bible. And I'm going to start by going by saying this. Be aware. Be alert. False prophets can perform miracles. Be aware, false prophets can perform miracles. Let's go back to the Old Testament and talk on that point. When Moses called, when God called Moses to go and deliver the children of Israel and Aaron with him, they went to Pharaoh. And to God showed a sign. And that sign was Aaron cast his rod on the floor and it became a snake. The Bible tells us that the Egyptians, Pharaoh called his own magicians and sorcerers and enchanters and diviners and they brought their own rods too and threw them down and their rods became snakes too. False prophets can also perform signs and wonders. They can perform miracles. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 22 to 27, I'm in the book of Matthew. I will just slip back there. Let's read that. Jesus had cast out a demon from somebody. And the religious leaders... Religious leaders, pay attention to that. They were not people outside the church. They were religious leaders. They accused him that he was casting out devils or demons with the power of Satan. Listen carefully to what Jesus said, beginning from verse 22. And we'll just go to verse 25. Jesus Okay, yeah. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out devils. So they accused Jesus that he was casting out devils by the prince of the devils, Satan. Verse 25 says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Verse 26. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? Here's the catch point. And if I drive out 
demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So there are people who can drive out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. Kind of makes it difficult here. So how can I make the distinction? The important distinction we're going to note here is that is it according to the word of God? I'm going to address that soon. So we'll continue from here. So we just noted that beware false prophets can perform miracles. In the case of Moses and his and the staff, and even in the case of Jesus, where they were accusing him that he was driving out demons by the prince of the demons. And Jesus just proves here that their own people would use the prince of the demons to cast out demons, which means that it's not exclusively within the Christian faith that demons can be cast out. Number two, false prophets will claim to have seen visions of Jesus and of God. And I want you to check it out. How many of these prophets talk like they have seen Jesus or they have seen the Father or that they have gone into heaven and know what's going on there? Just check it out. Do your homework. I'm not going to do that for you here. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, the disciples are asking Jesus about the signs of the end of the world, of the end of the age, of the time that Jesus was going to come back. They wanted to know. Listen carefully how Jesus responds to them regarding the time of his coming. Jesus answered, First thing, watch out that no one deceives you. Those are the first words that came out of the master's mouth regarding the time of his coming back. Watch out that no one deceives you. That is my cry to you. Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ. And will do what? I will deceive many. They will deceive many. How many of these prophets in the world today have declared that they have seen Christ? Or that in the assemblies, Christ is present more than anywhere else? That's a warning there. And then further down, in 30, in verses 23 to 27 of Matthew chapter 24, it says from verse 23, At that time, if anyone says to you, so let me back up to 21, because we are in a very serious pandemic of proportion that has never been seen in the world. Could it be? Could it be? And it could be the time of his coming. For then there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now. And never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one will survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Those days will be shortened. Praise here for that. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For what? For false prophets, for false Christs, and false prophets will appear. And do what? And perform great signs and miracles. Pause again. Listen again. 
We are saying that false prophets, they will claim that they will see Christ and that they will perform miracles. I'll read it again. Verse 24 of Matthew 24. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that was possible. They will perform great signs, great miracles, in order to deceive. Pick up your Bible. I'm making the appeal. And read it. False prophets will promise signs and wonders. False prophets will perform signs and wonders and miracles. I will deceive. Many. Not the word deceive here. That's the first thing he said. That a false Christ will come and will deceive many. Deceive many. Are you one among the many? That are deceived by false prophets. Is it not sufficient for you to follow just the word? Just to follow Jesus? Do you have to add a prophet with his signs and wonders? You have the freedom to make your choice. You have the freedom to make your choice. And so we just making our case here. And the third thing I want you to note is that prof, therefore, if, if it says here that, let me read it again. If it says that for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive, even the, like, if that was possible, If that is going to happen, and that is happening, the next point I'm going to say is that prophecy or miracles or signs and wonders do not always point to the fact that Jesus is present in that ministry. I'll say it again. Because false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders, it follows that when there are signs and wonders and miracles, it does not always point to the fact that Jesus is present in that ministry. If your evidence to validate a ministry is based on the fact that there are signs and wonders, it is not sufficient evidence for you to conclude that that ministry or that person is a prophet and is from God. Because false prophets and false Christ will perform miracles and are performing miracles in order to deceive. And we see the conclude uh, 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 that point made clear here in Matthew chapter 7, beginning from verse 15 to 23. Listen carefully. This is the master, the son of man, Jesus, the son of God, God himself speaking to you. He says again, watch out for false prophets. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ferocious wolves. They come to you like a man of God. But they want to rip you of your money, to rip you of your possessions. They ask you to sow a seed. If you really want to sow a seed, go to the streets. There are many people there who are suffering. Get that money and give it to those suffering people. Not to the prophet. And you are as selfish as the prophet because you are giving him the money because you think that it's going to multiply and come back to you. Your mind is on earthly things. You are deceived. You are deceived. I'll say that again. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing like wonderful, suited people. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. But by their fruit, you will recognize them. By their fruit. But if your mind is focused on earthly things, you will not be able to recognize them. But if your mind is focused on Christ, 
And I will bring your attention to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I am not saying that you cannot possess a house, you cannot possess money, you cannot have anything. No, I am not saying that. What I'm saying is that if your mind is focused on these things as your spiritual pursuit, then your God is your stomach and your mind is on earthly things. You're not following Jesus, you're following Satan, irrespective of whether you're going to church or not. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added to you. You are not going to go to church so that God will bless you. You are not going to seek God so that He will bless you. Seek God as an end in itself, not a means to an end. If it means that you're going to serve God and be jailed, serve Him. If it means you're going to serve God and go naked, serve Him. Are you willing to do that? Or you want God to bless you first before you can serve Him? Seek first the kingdom. It says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear Good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Now, here's the critical point here. I said that just because there's signs and wonders and miracles, it does not mean that that ministry is a proof of heaven or that Christ is found in that ministry. Here's the proof right here. The Master says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who is saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Only he who does the will of my Father. And the will of the Father is revealed in this book from Genesis 1 verse 1 to Revelation 22 verse 23. And like I said in the past, last week I will say it again. When you have exhausted this book, which is the mind of Christ, and it circulates and informs the way you do your things, if it's not sufficient, then you can go and seek a miracle or you can go seek a prophecy. So the will of God is revealed in the word of God. Now you have to know that word and do that word, obey that word in order to enter the kingdom. And so Jesus says that on that day, the day of the revelation of the Son of Man, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons, and perform many miracles. I want you to note that. Please, please, please note that very well. I will restate the proposition again. Just because there are signs and wonders and miracles, it does not conclude or validate the fact that that ministry is of God. Or that Christ is in that ministry. Why? Because there are people who will claim to prophesy in the name of Jesus. There are people who, who will claim to do miracles, to drive out demons in the name of Jesus. Many, many who do not belong to him or who do not do the will of God as it is clearly enunciated in this word. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, 
I never knew you. Oh. I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Very important. I will state it again, maybe redundant. Just the fact that there are signs and wonders and prophecies and casting out of demons does not validate the fact that that God Christ is in that ministry. He says, not all who say to me, Lord, 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 will enter the kingdom of God except those who do the will of my Father. And the will of the Father is found in the Word. And so Jesus, in Matthew 24, actually lets us understand what I'm talking about right here. Because if you hear the Word of God and you don't do it, well, you're building on sin. If you hear the word of God now and follow it, then you are building on the rock. You are wise. And you will not be deceived. But if, if, if all you want me to tell you is how you will be blessed, if all you want is a blessing, that is ugliness, Satanism. And you are still calling Jesus Lord. Even prophesying in his name and casting out demons in his name. You will not be accepted. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. My brother, my sister, have you built your house on the rock? Are you standing firmly on the word of God? Or you want to stand on the word of the prophet? Or you want to follow the signs and miracles and prophecies of the prophet? I want you to think about that for a moment. Because eternity is at stake. In talking about this generation... This wicked generation, which you can read about in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 10, in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 22 to 32, and we have already examined Matthew 24 in a little bit, in Luke 21, Jesus says that in this wicked generation, no sign, <laughs> no sign from heaven will be given to anybody to prove that God exists. No sign. If you are following Jesus, listen to Jesus. He says, no sign will be given these generations. Except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And the sign of the prophet Jonah in the belly of the fish depicted that Jesus lived and died on the cross for our sins, was buried and was raised again for our justification. That is the gospel. You don't need to go any further than that. When you want to go any further than that, you will be deceived or you are already deceived. So it is very critical, therefore, that we know the sign that God has given us. And that sign is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's defined as the gospel. The gospel. The gospel has nothing to do with prophecies. The gospel has nothing to do with miracles. The gospel has nothing to do with financial and material blessing. It has to do about you repenting from your sin and accepting that Jesus died for your sins and that he will give you life if you believe in him, will cause you to be born again. If you want to go any further than that, you will be deceived. That is the gospel. And that is what I'm giving you. If you don't hear anything from me, just take that one. Romans 10 verse 9 says, This is the word that we are proclaiming. That Jesus is Lord. And that if you believe in your heart that he is Lord. And confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That is the good news of this book. It's not about miracles. 
This generation will not be given any sign except the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 4. It talks about the gospel right here, my people. Let me read that for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. So now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which was which you received and on which you have taken your stand. The gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word, to the word, to the word, to the word, we preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. That is the word. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to, the, to Peter and then the twelve. The dead, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ is the gospel. Is the word that you should preach. The word that you should run after. Not run after miracles. Because many miracle performers, many people who cast out demons, many who prophesy, that day I will say, I did not know you. Depart from me, you evil doers. That's the word. No sign will be given this generation. The signs that are performed will be of the devil. Galatians chapter 1 verse 5 to 9. Just look at that. Paul says, Galatians 1 5 to 9. Paul says this. I want you to understand, people, that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the word that Paul preached. That is the word that we have been committed it was not the word of a prophecy here, a miracle here, a demon driven out here. Well, yes, Christ will do that. But he says, no sign in this generation except the dead, burial, and, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if your package of the gospel contains anything more than that, you are preaching a false gospel. You are a false teacher. You are a false prophet. And Paul says here in Galatians 1, beginning from verse 6, I am astonished. I am surprised that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by his grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ, and are turning to a different gospel. And are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one preached to you. Let him be eternally condemned. Let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if another, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than that you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. And then Paul says, am I not trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. I am not seeking to please you. To please your desires of your flesh. That is what the prophet will come and do to you. Oh, you're going to receive a miracle. You're going to receive a blessing. That is another gospel. That is another gospel. No sign will be given this generation. The gospel is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and was raised for our justification. Believe in him. Confess him. Repent from your sin. Heaven will be yours. Not run after some prophecy. Run after some miracle or signs. Will it surprise you? You know, in, 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 um, let, let, let me not go to the next point here. Let me. Um, so it says, no sign will be given this generation. And Jesus, uh, let me see, um, Luke, uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. I'll just read it to you and you'll understand. Our generation is a wicked generation. 
And so you people, you are running after signs and wonders because you are so wicked, you cannot accept the fact that Jesus dying on the cross is sufficient for your salvation. That's why you are running after signs and wonders. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. You want a sign from heaven, right? Before you know that, oh yeah, that's the man of God. You want a sign. No sign will be given this wicked generation. You love yourselves more than you love God. You love material possessions more than you love God. That is why you are running after miracles and signs and wonders. And you will be deceived if you are not deceived already. Turn back. The gospel is sufficient. The dead burial and resurrection of Jesus is sufficient. They say, show us a sign from heaven. And Jesus replied and said, when evening comes, you say it will be fair weather. For the sky is red. And in the morning today, it will be stormy. For the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky. But you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Do you know the times we are living in now? They were living in a season of his coming back. And that that's why we have a lot of false prophets or, or a lot of prophets and prophecies and signs and wonders. That is the season. Jesus says, by the time I'll be coming back, all these things will happen. And then he asks a question. Will the Son of Man return and find faith on the earth? I'm afraid not. Because we don't believe just in him. We want something attached to it. We want a prophecy attached to it. We want signs and wonders attached to it. We don't have faith to believe that which we don't see and to accept it as true. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that it is impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith. When you're running to see things by sight, that's not faith. You want a sign. You want a sign. You will be deceived by signs and wonders and miracles that actually happen. The presence of them does not always point to the fact that Christ is in the ministry. And so you say a wicked and an adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. If you are not satisfied with that gospel, you have been deceived. Or you will be deceived. That is the gospel I'm declaring to you. You look at Luke uh, 11 verse 29 to 30, it's, 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 uh, it's the same thing there. A wicked generation runs after signs and wonders. A wicked generation runs after signs and wonders. Luke 11, verse 29 to 30. Say, as the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. That's the only sign, people. Jesus came. He died. He was buried. He was resurrected. He died for our sins. He was raised for our justification that we will be raised to life and live with him eternally. If you are not satisfied with that, go ahead. Go get deceived. Follow your prophet. Follow your signs and wonders. I'm not going to say see you in heaven. As we come down here, I'm nearing the conclusion. I want to say something here that is very striking. And you may not perceive this if you are not following the word of God meticulously. God sends false prophets. What? God sends false prophets to test you. Oh, what? Yes. Just like you have trials. And temptations, you'll be tested spiritually. God will send false prophets. He will allow them to perform miracles. But are you running after that or running after God? That is not possible. 
If God sends false prophets, what are we going to do? Well, he has told us what to do. Stay with the word. Stay with the word. Like I said, the only way you can distinguish counterfeit from real money is when you know real money. The only way you can distinguish between false prophecy and false prophets and real preaching and true prophecy is by studying the word of God exhaustively, meticulously, earnestly, passionately. Otherwise, you'll be deceived. Yes, God sends false prophets. And the only way that we can be out of the hands is by paying attention to the word of God. Yesterday, or last week, I talked, we read Jeremiah 23, and I want you to go back and read that. It talks about false prophets stealing what's here and saying there. But there's a few things that are mentioned there three times in verse 18 of Jeremiah 23. It says that, who of you? There's a lot of false prophecy around, but who of you have sat on the counsel of God? Who of you have sat on the counsel of God to hear his word? To listen to his word. Two active verbs there. Hear and listen to the word of God. When it goes over later in that chapter, it says, Okay, let the dreamer tell his dream. Let the prophet tell his dream. But let him who has my word, let him who has my word declare it faithfully. That's what you should do. That's what I'm doing. I understand the counsel of God from this book. And I will declare the word of God faithfully. You don't want that. Go listen to your dream. Go listen to your miracle. It's clear. The only way that you can succeed, the only way that you can be able to determine whether anything is false or true is when you follow the word of God meticulously. In, in Matthew chapter 4, we talk about the temptation of Jesus. Oh my, Jesus, very God in the flesh. Satan comes to him. What was the first temptation? Bread. Material possessions. It's like you are the son of God. You don't even have a horse. You don't even have an airplane. You don't even have a car. You don't have many blessings. What kind of son of God are you? And the devil is asking you that same question today. But you are running after the devil to prove that you can have the possessions, you can have the airplanes, you can have the cars, you can have the houses. But what did Jesus say to Satan? What did Jesus say to Satan? If you want to tell me that you are following Jesus, listen to how Jesus overcame the temptation of material possessions summarized in bread. He says to Satan, It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Not a word from a prophet. Not a word from a prophet. It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now listen carefully. By every word. Every word in this book. Every word. See how it is important to eat this word? Yeah, you got the temptations. They're all around you. It is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word, on the line, every, a million times in your Bible. Jesus said, Matthew 5, I think 17 and following, I did not come to destroy the law. 
but I came to fulfill. For heaven and earth and everything else you see will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. Every dot, every t, t cut will be fulfilled to the letter. And so you're waiting for Jesus and you don't know his word, you're running after some prophet, you will be deceived. And you know what? After that temptation, Satan say, oh yeah, you want to tell me you know the word of God? I know the word of God too. Let me tell you that false prophets know the word of God a lot. And they're going to quote it to you. But they're going to quote it out of context. They're going to quote it out of context. So that's what the devil did. He said, well, you can fall down from this corner of the temple because the Bible says he will have his angels to hold you up. The point I'm making here in the temptation of Jesus is that he overcame Satan by this word. You put this word aside, you will be deceived or you are already deceived. Again, I say it, just because there are miracles, just because there is a prophecy, it's not a proof that Jesus is in that ministry. He says that many, many will come to me that day and say, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in church in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform miracles in your name. And he will say, I know you not. Depart from me, evildoers. Because it's not according to the word. Yes. The Lord is going to allow false prophets to come to you. He's going to allow false prophets to come to you. But you can only overcome them with the word. Eat it. Think about it. You want me to prophesy a blessing to you? You want me to prophesy a blessing to you? Go to Psalms 1, 1 to 3. Bless it. Is the man who does not walk in the company of sinners, nor stand in the way of, of the wicked, nor sit on the seat of the mockers, but his delight, but his delight is in the word of the Lord. His delight is in the word of the Lord. Whatever. He is going to be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters who brings forth his leaf in every season. Whatever he does will prosper. Oh yeah, I'm prophesying to you now. Blessing and prophecy and, and, and prosperity. Blessing and prosperity. And it comes by meditating on the word of the Lord. You go to Joshua 1. What did he, what did he, what was Joshua told? You want a blessing from me? You want me to prophesy blessing and prosperity to you? Psalms 1, 1 to 3. I have just done that. Joshua 1, beginning from verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I saw to your forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Listen carefully. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Be careful to do what? Be careful to be obey all the law. My people, this is what I'm telling you. It is the word of God. Be careful to study all of it. All of it. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Huh? Don't turn from this word to the left or to the right. Don't turn to a prophet. Don't turn to some miracle performer or some prophecy. Or this. Don't turn to the right or to the left. What will happen to you? That you may be successful wherever you go. There you go. You want a blessing? You want success? You want prosperity? Hang on to the word of God. All of it. And then if he pours airplanes, cars, and everything on your way, that's your blessing. But not run after a prophet. Some sign and miracle worker. Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. What did Jesus say? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Don't let this word of the Lord de uh, uh, depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. 
That's the same words that is used in Psalms 1. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on it he meditates day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not a preacher of doom. But you have to do it God's way. God's way, not man's way. The whole counsel of God. Sit with God in his counsel and proclaim his word. Don't run after some prophet. Who has anything other than what has already been written about the plan of God? We are almost getting towards the end of revelation for things to be fulfilled. And rather than seeking after fulfillment, you're seeking after some prophecy from who? And that prophecy, how far does it go? Come on, people. Don't be so simplistic in your thinking. Don't be so ignorant. No doubt the word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge. But, you can read this book multiple times. It will show you the right way. So I'm saying here that God will allow those false prophets to come. He will let those false prophets to perform miracles. Deuteronomy 13. Let's look at Deuteronomy 13. Don't take my word for it. Please. Don't, don't believe me. Just believe the word. I will be ex I will be the happiest person. Just believe the word. I will be the happiest. Revelation 13. God says, if a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a miraculous sign or wonder, <laughs> and announces to you a what? A miraculous sign or wonder. How many of those billboards have you seen around the world and in your country announcing for miraculous signs and wonders? And if the sign or wonder of which he has spoken takes place, listen carefully. He announces a sign and a wonder, and that sign and wonder actually takes place, and he says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. He's going to announce a sign. That sign is going to happen. But the things that he's bringing forth about the worship of God do not look like things that the Bible has said. He's going to announce a sign and perform a sign and it will actually happen. But he's going to bring up things in the worship of God that are not according to the word of God. The Bible says, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. It says, the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. If you want to prove that you love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, you will delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it day and night. So what this passage is telling us that yes, prophets are going to come. They are going to announce signs and wonders. And these signs and wonders will take place. But if in the midst of that, they bring up things that are not found in the Bible, don't follow them. Don't believe them. But why did they come in the first place? God is testing you. God is testing you. To see what you will do. Whether you truly love him with your heart. Or you are just pretending. Or even sincerely pretending. Because you want to fulfill the desires of your flesh. It is a law your God you must follow. What? It is the Lord your God you must follow and Him you must revere. Him you must revere. We revere a lot of people today. There's a lot of mugs going around today. Man of God, man of God. So many of them. And we revere these people more than we revere God. We listen to their prophecy more than we listen to the word of God. Yes, you do that. And you know what I'm talking about. 
Because you spend your night not thinking about the word of God. You spend your night thinking about what the prophet is going to say and what he has said will happen to you. He said, but it is the Lord your God you must follow and you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him, serve him, and hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death. Yes, I said it. And some of you were like, what? Yes. This nonsense, who call themselves prophets, must be put to death. Because he preached rebellion against the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. He has tried you to, he has tried to turn you from the way of the Lord your God, commanded you to follow. You must purge evil among you. He says, even if it is your very own brother, or your son, or daughter, or the wife you love, or your closest friend, secretly entices you saying, let us worship other gods. Do not yield to him or listen to him. Show him no pity. Do not spare him or shield him. You must certainly put him to death. Your hand must be the first in putting him to death. And then the hands of all the people. Stone him to death. Because he tried to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Then all Israel will hear and be afraid and no one among you will do such evil thing again. You want to be a prophet? Do you understand the severity of God? Do you understand the severity of the word of God? Do you? Did you hear that? Yes, God will send them. Yes, they will announce and perform a sign. If anything within what they do contradicts the word of God, they are to be stoned to death. Well, if you're following something else, you don't care about God. You don't revere God. You revere your mug, man of God. That's who you revere. That's who you run after. That's who you dream about. Because they tell you how many good things you're going to have. And how many of you actually have those good things? That these deceivers and liars... They, they travel, they have great money, mansions, and you are poor, destitute. But he keeps taking money away from you. False prophets! False prophets! I said it again. Why are you deceived? Because you don't know the word of God. Because you don't know the word of God. The Bible shows clearly that false prophets will be damned. That damnation will come. And false prophecy is so prevalent today, so deceptive, pulling many, many, many away. I'm not just saying that. That's what the Lord says. The Lord says that, I, 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 we read at the beginning in Matthew 24, that when they came to him, they wanted to know what will happen or how will the world look like in the time that is coming out? And the first thing that comes out of the master's mouth is, Be careful that no one deceives you for false Christ and false prophets will come in my name. And they will perform signs and wonders. So that if it was possible, they will deceive even the elect. Come on people, if you are following Jesus, would you just listen to him a little bit? Could you just listen to Jesus a little bit? Take some time and if you can't read the Bible, all of it as I've challenged you, read one of the Gospels, read Matthew, and listen to what Jesus is saying about material possessions, about following Him. He says, don't even spare your wife. Don't even spare your son. Don't even spare any relative of yours who brings in these damnable things, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. You don't understand the severity of the word of God. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1 to 12. It says, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. 
Don't let anyone deceive you. Once more again, that's that word. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. The rebellion. This generation has rebelled against God and the word of God. Until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sits himself in God's temple. Yes, he sits himself in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't let don't you remember when I was with you? I used to tell you about these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do to do so still until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Now verse 9 to 12 is very critical, which is why I brought your attention to this passage. See, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles. Signs and wonders. Did anybody hear me? Don't hear me. Read the word of God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12. to The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders. Satan. Satan, today in this last day, is performing counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. And the question, are you one of those who is perishing? They per Why do they perish? They perish because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Because they refuse to love the truth. What is the truth? John 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. They refuse to believe the word which is truth. And therefore you are perishing. Go ahead. Go after your prophecy. Go after your signs and wonders. My Bible, the truth tells me that Satan also performs signs and wonders and counterfeit miracles. So I said, just because there's miracles, prophecy, signs and wonders, does not validate or authenticate the fact that Jesus is in that ministry. And God will allow those things to come to test you. Whether you will you hang on to the truth? Will you hang on to the word of God? Which I am declaring to you. Well, the rejection of that truth means that you are going to perish. For this reason, listen. I said God sends the counterfeit miracle, miracle workers. For this reason, because you don't love to receive the truth. For this reason... God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will be believe the lie and so that all will be condemned or damned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Wickedness. To conclude, if you love the truth, you will show it by loving the word of God. Then you will have life. You will have eternal life. You will save your life. The Lord Jesus, in John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, says to the Jews who believed in him, he says, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. The truth and the word are the same thing. You will know the truth 
and the truth will set you free. You set you free. He goes ahead to say that if you are overcome by anything, you are a slave to that thing. But if you come to Jesus, he will set you free. Say, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and say, you are a great teacher because you are doing great things. Jesus did not focus on how great a prophet or a miraculous worker he is. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless you are born of the flesh and of the spirit, you are born naturally as a sinner, but you are born again spiritually when you repent from your sins and to follow Jesus. Lastly, we read from Matthew 7. Jesus said that, on that day, many will say to me, Oh, he says that not all who say to me, Lord, 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 will enter heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father. For on that day, many will say to me, Lord, 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 we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform miracles in your name. But he's going to say to them, I don't know you. I don't know you. And then he says, to you who hear my word, and you keep it. You are a wise person. You are building on the rock. So it is the word of God versus signs and wonders. Which one will you pick? You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. All praise to the most high God. Hallelujah. Thank you.